What we have here, this is exciting. Did any of you guys know I like baseball? Yeah. Yeah, we, we actually we love baseball. And this goes back to a time when baseball was certainly America's pastime. And the New York Yankees, God rest their soul, uh, they were a team that won, I don't know, maybe 20 World Series in a span of 1920 to 1960. Uh, they continually got great players to go to New York. If you were a player back in that era, where did you want to go play? New York is where the fire was. It's where the action was. Um, you look at players like Mantle was recently, and he probably, even Ruth may have had a lot longer career if <laughs> they weren't partying so much at night in New York City, where you party all night. So the amazing thing with the Yankees is they got powerful lineups and great pitching. So their batter's lineup at one point was named Murderer's Row because nobody wanted to come up and pitch against the Yankees because everybody's going to hit a home run. So who in the hell do you pitch to? There's nobody to intentionally walk so you can get to some cushy batter behind them. Uh, they were just really, really tough. This, they were called Murderer's Row for decades. I don't know when it first started but I'm sure it was back in the Ruth era with Gehrig and all those great players they had. And I even have a photograph at home, a first period photograph, a murderer's row, when the guys literally would sit in the dugout with their bats as Tommy guns, pointing them at the opposing team. They could have the whole lineup sitting in the dug dugout or the clubhouse with bats like machine guns. But this is the original artwork that was in a New York newspaper as a cartoon about going up against Murderer's Row. And it's not the early Murderer's Row because you can look at the names on the jerseys here. And it does have Gehrig, DiMaggio, um, Selkirk, Chapman, Becky, Crosetti, very important name in here. Uh, I'll explain why in a minute. But they're going out to hit against the opposing team. And this is so awesome. Now, for me, if I'm going to buy and I buy for myself, uh, which I do occasionally, less now than I used to, but I bought this for myself, and why did I buy it? It's unusual, and it has a story. So, to me, I have to have interesting things. I don't want to have boring things around my house or office. So... People ask me, why did you buy this? Uh, I bought it from the estate of Frank Crosetti. So Crosetti, as in back here in Murderer's Row. And I bought it April 26th, I think 1997. I have it in memory. I know that because the tag's on the back. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it at Superior Auction. And that um, they were auctioning off Frank Crosetti's estate. And I'm so pissed. Can I say that word on here? Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so pissed I didn't buy. They had on, um, to show you the personalities that were going on in a baseball game. Crosetti ended up as the manager of the New York Yankees for years. And if you look at the murderer's row and how it evolved, Mickey Mantle ended up as part of that row. And Mickey Mantle was always getting his ass busted by Frank Crosetti, probably because he knew Mickey could do better. So in there was a picture of Mickey Mantle crossing home plate on his 500th home run. And he gave a picture of himself crossing the plate to Frank Rossetti, his manager. And he autographed it. Thanks, Frank, the first time in 500. Meaning in 500 home runs, this is the first time Rossetti went out to congratulate Mantle for hitting a home run. And I love it because that was a dry, hard, epic sense of humor that these players had in working together. <laughs>